six races, more riders are in position to win the 250 National Motocross Crown than at any time in the sport's history. Four riders are all within 14 points of one another. There have been four different riders take the checkers in 1999. Points leader Frenchman Sebastian Tortelli is setting the pace. South African Greg Albertine, a fellow former GP winner, is only two points back. Ezra Lusk is but four points behind the leader. The season's winningest rider, Kevin Windham, has used three wins to advance to just 14 from the lead. In the 125s, can anyone stop the record-breaking rampage of Pro Circuit's Ricky Carmichael? Stay tuned. Round 7 of AMA Motocross is next. Hello everyone, Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs with you from Unadilla Sports Center in New Berlin, New York. It is the 30th anniversary of this great old track for round number seven of A.D. Carmichael. Tucks another moto win away as we take a look at the 250 riders relaxing, if not yawning, Kevin Windham. And we'll be right back with photo number one of the 250s when we return. Art Ekman, David Bailey, Davy Coombs back at the Unadilla Valley Sports Center in New Berlin, New York as we get set for the 250's first moto of action. And the big reason for all the excitement is that Sebastian Tortelli is leading the points race but only by two over Albertine and only 14 points between the leader and the fourth place rider Kevin Windham. One of the participants in this great points race, Ezra Lusk with his mechanic Mike Gossler as we look down at Jimmy Button. What big difference between this points race and many others is the fact that there's four riders involved, not two. Let's go down to Davy Coombs. Well, as you might remember, for years, Unadilla was known as the home of the 250 World Motocross Championships in the United States round of the Grand Prix Series, but that's no longer the case. It's now just one of the stops on the AMA Mazda National Championship Tour. However, today, we have Sebastian Tortelli, the reigning 250 world champion, and Greg Albertine, a former 250 world champion, on top of the points going into the Unadilla round of the American National Championships. And so long a Grand Prix, but for all intents and purposes, Unadilla is a world championship race today. Well put, Davey, as uh, Sebastian Tortelli cleaning out the goggles, getting ready to get on the bike. I've been impressed, though, with Greg Albertine and his speed that's been generated. Tortelli having trouble a little bit with starts after capturing the lead. As we take a look at the starting grid, Sebastian Tortelli, our points leader with Ezra Lusk. Greg Albertine, Mike LaRocco is still not out of it on that factory connection Honda. Kevin Windham, Emig, one of the big winners here at Unadilla. In fact, he's won the last two 250 main events here on this uh, very traditional course. We take a look at the 40 rider field. Those riders making it through qualifying. All but the top 10 have to qualify the day of the main event. 250 riders at the gate getting ready. If you had your uh, money to put down, it probably would go for Wyndham on the whole shot money. He's taken the last four, David Bailey. Oh, if I had any money, that's where I'd put it on Kevin. He's been just amazing out of the gate. All that smoke you see coming from the left, these guys trying to get that tire nice and hot. Tortelli and Albertine all the way on the inside or to the left of your screen right now. See how that turns out. That should be interesting. That's the first time I've seen contenders in there right next to each other. Who will get the whole shot? Damon Huffman of the Kawasaki on the outside. Looks like he'll get the whole shot, buddy. But Kevin Windham, number 14, is right behind him. Raynard going down the middle of the pack. That's a real slick area. We've seen a lot of guys almost wash out there, and Robert Rainer was lucky that he wasn't picked off by the riders coming from behind. But he's coming back into the race in about 35th position. Kevin Windham the leader now, as he took over the lead from Damon Huffman, and they go down to that exciting gravity cavity. And another hole shot for Kevin. I mean, it must just be so comfortable for him to just sit there at the starting line knowing he's going to get the hole shot. He's just been amazing out of the gate lately. Came into this race with seven hole shots. Morocco's won that battle for second now. Number three, Mike Morocco, factory connection, jack of the box Honda. And Huffman has moved back to fourth, as Doug Henry now in fifth spot. I would think this would be a pretty good track for that four stroke. John Sebastian Waugh is number 21. Good to see him up there from Planet Honda. So we have two independent Honda teams in good position. 
You hear that four stroke thumping along. Right there on the outside behind Damon Huffman. And looked like Wyndham was starting to pull away a little bit there by that first quarter of a lap. And now the Rockos reeled him right back in. Wyndham, three wins on the season, the winningest rider so far. But if he hadn't had that uh, Glenn Helen experience where he had a 38th in the first moto for no points and a 14th place in the second, he'd be right up there near the top of the list right now. Good battle going on. Doug Henry, Damon Huffman, battling it out for fourth place as Kevin Windham is our leader. This is a difficult corner at the bottom. There's no berm down there today, no main line, so you should see a lot of passing, block passing down there at the bottom. Sebastian Tortelli, our leader, did not get a good start. That's nothing new for Sebastian. Greg Albertine, who's only two points behind him, is right in front of him there in back of Huffman. Number eight, Greg Albertine with number 44, Sebastian Tortelli in his rookie American year in motocross right there. They started right next to each other and they're still next to each other out there on the track. Keeping tabs on one another. A lot to learn from each other. They're both probably the most aggressive riders out there in the racetrack and Albie makes a pass on Huffman. Now. Exercising some of that aggressiveness. It's not easy to get to the inside of that corner and make a pass stick. Absolutely, Albertine now working on Henry, and it's not easy to get around that four-stroke here at Unadilla. This is the most one-line section on the racetrack. You just have to be patient through here. And another thing, that four-stroke really throws up a bigger roost. Well, you see these guys zigzagging all back and forth across his line, trying to stay out of that. Well, it's Henry, Albertine, Tortelli trying to get by. And Tortelli finally does get by Huffman, as you saw it briefly there on the screen. Well, once, Hart, once Henry lays down the power, that thing just hooks up. He gets a nice 4-5 bike link jump on the guys behind him. Henry riding himself into shape after the season started on a good bike tour, but is getting more competitive as time goes on. Mike LaRocco, number three, in second place. I'm impressed with Wah here. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with the way LaRocco had just closed the gap up to, to Wyndham because Wyndham is so fast in the first couple laps of the race, but now Waugh is maybe the faster of the three. Waugh had a good Bud's Creek. He had a fifth place in the opening moto. Went down to about a 12th in the second moto for an eighth overall, his best of the season, but he's hanging on well. The challenge is on. Wyndham, number 14, has got Mike LaRocco. Oh, and Ezra Lusk is down. Ezra Lusk is down. That's on the uphill as they come out of the back. That's just about 10 feet away from the mechanics area coming around the corner just to the left of what we're seeing here. Looks like he's going to have to call on that toughness that we saw last year to get back into this race. We'll have to check on our sources on the corner sources to see what actually happened to Ezra Lusk. But out front, we've got three Hondas from three different teams going at it with the defending champion right behind them. We're back at Unadilla. Our Declan, David Bailey, Davy Coombs, round seven of motocross action. First moto of 250 action. And a great battle out front. Mike LaRocco in pursuit of Kevin Windham. The independent team of Factory Connection Jack in the Box of Mike LaRocco taking on Team Honda's Kevin Windham. LaRocco's been out breaking him into most of the corners. Still can't find his way around yet. Side by side, Nil. Nice little brush. Good block pass for Mike LaRocco taking over the lead. That was beautiful. LaRocco in first place. Looking for his first moto win of the season. He's had a couple of second places in motos this year. But he's looking for that checkered flag. And he's the kind of rider who will never be happy until he gets one, David. And I think he won't even be happy with this unless he gets it in the second moto, too, for the overall. Mike, he's a perfectionist. He wants to go out and ride up to his expectations all the time. It doesn't always happen, but it's been a while since he's had the lead, and here's how he got it. Just out break. Kevin Windham going down to the corner. Didn't leave Kevin a whole lot of room. Kevin actually did a pretty good job of getting back in the berm. Otherwise, he'd have been out there rolling around in the grass with the spectators. Yeah, did insult the injury. Gave him a good roost on the way out of there, too. Oh. 
Yeah, Sebastian Wall almost going over the bars. Looked like he missed a shift or something, but that gives Tortelli a lot more confidence. Tortelli to the inside, number 44. He is so fast and so good at coming up through the field. Sebastian Tortelli telling us that it was easier in the GPs to cut through if you get a bad start because they kind of let you through with your reputation. Let's go down to Dave in the pits. So far, it's been an excellent start for Honda here in the first motor. They got all four of the top four spots, but right here, as we lost, third place in the standings going to this moto. His championship hopes take a bitter blow with that front front wheel. They're going to try and fix it. I can see there's a spoke wrapped around. Looks like he either crashed or busted up some spokes on one of the rocks. He's no way going to be able to make up some points. I think they're just going to send him out there to try and do as best he can, learn the track for the second moto. The word, David, we got from the observer in the corner was that he might have got a foot peg of Larry Ward in those spokes when he was dueling it out before he went down. Tortelli now with Albertine. Oh, what a matchup now. Albertine just two points behind Tortelli in the points race. Bar to bar action with number eight and 44. Albertine moves in front of Tortelli. It's a back and forth situation. Well, as soon as we set that up, as soon as he went to the shot of Tortelli, he got into that corner back there where Morocco made the pass for the lead and he stalled it. He went just out of our frame while he was trying to get that started. He did a pretty good job of doing it. Held off Albertine, but that just made it even closer for Albertine. He went right for the kill. A lucky break for Greg Albertine and he was at the right place with the right goods to take advantage of it. Now let's see if Tortelli can come back on him. Tortelli with a sweep 1-1 in the opener at Glen Helen for a win. Albertine with a sweep in the third race of the season. Talk about similarities. The two are so well liked and if they work so hard, I don't think it really matters where they're from. Let's go back down to the mechanics area. Now Davy Coombs and clarify Lusk's situation. Guys, I got Ezra Lusk's wheel down there. I can tell you what happened. It looks like he crashed with someone and caught a handlebar. All the spokes ripped off. I'm sure that when the nipples came off here, one of the spokes punctured the tube. That caused him to get that flat tire. Tough break for Ezra Lusk. You don't see that happen very often. What we're seeing is an outstanding race. First of all, a great rivalry between Wyndham and LaRocco. LaRocco finally taking over first place against Kevin Wyndham. And now we're looking back at number 11, Jeff Emmy. Emmy winning last year and the year before here at Unadilla. No one has won three races in a row here at Unadilla in the 250 class. And it doesn't look like Jeff will either. Yeah, with the start he got, he's got so far to go, I don't think he can put that together today. Corner speed or corners equal speed, I'm not sure exactly what that sign meant. Obviously, they communicated during before the race. Mike knows what it means. A personal code, maybe, but whatever it was, it seems to be working as Mike LaRocco is starting to pull a lead here at Unadilla. Our first 250 moto we will be back with more exciting action in a moment. Brought to you by Mazda. Mazda, get in, be moved. And we're back at Unadilla, and a very exciting opening photo 250 action. Greg Albertine is not looking behind him to protect his lead on Tortelli. He's looking up at Kevin Windham right now. And the battle for second place has gone back and forth. Albie makes that pass from the outside. The only best way I can describe Alvin right now is he's just fast. Everywhere on the racetrack, he's just wide open and fast. No, no poetry to it or anything like that. He's just on the gas. Kevin Wyndham tried to come back to the inside, giving Alvin a battle. Wyndham to the inside. Oh, by the bar, Wyndham. Alvin up the hill. Oh, my goodness. Morocco is out in front, but Albertine now has moved into second and is also not that far behind. Mike LaRocco. These guys leaned on each other's shoulders up that hill, and neither one of them wanted to let off. Now he was smart to get down that hill and somehow get stopped in that inside rush. The good thing he did, otherwise Wyndham would have got him right back on that inside. This is not just excitement, this is pure boldness we're seeing right now with all the little battles going on within the race. Here was the first pass, now he's caught Kevin's back. 
the inside's been paying off their passing. We saw the 125 class. At that time, now we just went to the outside, motor right around it. Kevin Windham trying to hold on to Albertine as he's got Sebastian Tortelli coming up on his rear. If they finish with Windham between them, Albie would have the lead going into the second moto. Let's go to Davey now. Joe, once again, if it wasn't for you and Greg Albertine on that Suzuki, we'd be having a Honda runaway here. Yeah, somebody's got to beat him. It's glad it's us. I know Greg likes this track a lot. He got a good start. You think he's happy with second at this point? No. no he wants to win, for sure. Here's the battle now with Wyndham and Tortella. Teammates for Team Honda. Tortelli tries an inside move, then goes to the outside. Wyndham covers that. Wyndham covered that beautifully. But Tortelli gets the inside move, and with great speed, takes over the position. Already opens up a little gap. That's how good Tortelli is able to read these guys. And he's been over here for not very long. He's able to figure, OK, he's going to be covering his air. He's going to walk to the outside. I'm going to go back to the inside. But easier said than done. He does it perfect. Perfect timing for that inside move. Wyndham. He still wants to hang on. He's still in the points race. Only 14 points in back of the leader, Tortelli. Tortelli now, his assignment is to catch up with Greg Albertine, who's trying to catch up to Morocco. Just imagine if Tortelli could just place about five positions better on each start in this championship so far. Where would he be right now? Starts has just been horrible. Making for some exciting racing. Doug Henry. Didn't slip too far from the, the leaders. Through the gravity cavity. A lot of air time coming out of there. I think Doug kind of suffering the same thing that I thought Nathan Ramsey had a problem with, and that's just finding the right lines out there. Occasionally, he's just got to do a little bit too much stop and go in the corners, and these other guys are just wide open everywhere, just railing, keeping their speed up. Button of the four stroke, trying to catch up with David Huffman. Huffman number 31 on the team Kawasaki. And let's go back down now to David Jones. Another rider with problems with the front wheel in this motor. This time it's Tim Ferry, Chaparral Yamaha team. Tim has just moved into 10th place. The point stands coming into this race, but it looks like it's going to drop back out after the first moto. Doc Drake with Ferry, who had a good overall. The Chaparral Yamaha, but look at this now. Greg Albertine just pulled up on our leader, Mike Morocco. Morocco, we mentioned that Emig won this race twice. Morocco has also won this race twice. Back in 94 on a Kawasaki and on a Suzuki in 95. Now he's on a hunt. He would join a very select company if he should win. On his third grand here at Unadilla. Look who he's got to hold on. Tortelli to the outside now with a battle for second place. You can't let up any second now. You take one line to try to get around Morocco, and Tortelli might take advantage of it. Oh, my goodness. Suzuki trivia question. What boring rider won his first? Who took the overall at Unadilla in 96? We'll be back with the answer. Welcome back to Unadilla, our Suzuki trivia question. Which foreign rider won his first 250 overall at Unadilla in 1996? It was Greg Albertine. And it's right between the two wins of Larocco and the two wins of Jeff Emmy. But Greg Albertine really left here with a sense of confidence. He did not win a moto in that overall victory, but what consistency. John Sebastian Hua, number 21 on the Planet Honda. Cutting through a lapper right now. He's been impressive. Even though our battle has been out front most of the way, he's currently in fourth. Does a lot for you when you can get a great start, get out there and run with the contenders, see what the leaders do, get used to their pace, the lines they choose, and definitely put some ground on all the guys behind him he normally has the battle with. We've been unable to leave the action up front, and here's Ezra Lusk in 25th. He's trying to get back into a point situation, your top 20 gaining points. Well, if, even if he doesn't gain points, I like what Davey had said earlier, and that is that he's going to learn a little bit about the racetrack so that Moto2 
He doesn't have to spend the first few laps getting used to how rough it's become. He's had some great comebacks in his day, getting in, getting some points out of uh, near tragic situations. The battle for sixth place is on. Doug Henry holding on. Jeff Emig is right behind him. Two seasoned veterans. Whoa! Lost track of the track. That was a pretty, I think he did that on purpose. He's getting out there, he doesn't want to land in a bump. He flew out of there so far, if he'd have landed in a hole, that, that could have been a little bit sketchy. So he just decided, well, I'll just go out there in the grass where it's nice and smooth and hook up well. Plus, he, uh, he had a good... He took some lead. banners with him that time. Yeah, it sets him up good for the next right-hand corner, but there he was lucky not to collect those banners. He's really experimenting with the lines out there. He's definitely making up ground on Doug Henry. I don't know if that means he's making up ground on the leaders or not. And he's definitely got a chance to pick up another spot here before the moto's over. White flag lap, final lap. We've got to go back to those leaders. LaRocco, Tortelli, and Albertine. The points race battle between 44 and 8. LaRocco, he wants to win. He wants to move up the ladder to get into the fray. It's nice, though, to have two guys concerned about each other behind you when you're out in front. Real nice. So this last lap is going to seem like it's going to take forever. Morocco trying so hard to get a moto win. To get These other guys believe in that he is a real threat, not just somebody that can be up there in the top four all the time. This could mean the difference between whether he can win the championship this year or not. Holding these guys off in this moto could do a lot for his confidence and send a message to these other guys. Into the lap traffic, Tortelli now getting ever so close to Mike LaRocco on the final lap. This has been the best photo I've seen all year. Greg Albertine is not that far behind. Should something happen to one of these two riders? LaRocco trying to hold on for his first photo victory of the year. Look how fast Tortelli, he was on the power before LaRocco was. Usually when the rider in front of you comes out of the corner, that gap opens up, it actually closed. We've had so many close altercations in this moto. To the inside, Tortelli. Can LaRocco hold on? LaRocco playing off maybe a lapper there. Mike LaRocco just a few turns away. And he is really thinking right now about what is he going to do in this, as soon as they drop down this hill right here, he better do this corner perfect, not leave any room or Tortelli's going to take it. Tortelli to the inside once again, but that becomes the outside as they come up that very steep hill. Morocco playing it perfect. One more opportunity for Tortelli, the left hander. This is where Morocco took the lead. He's got enough of a gap. Morocco to the outside, getting as much momentum as possible to come up the hill. Morocco takes the checkered flag. Tortelli, Albertine in that order just that quickly. Oh, what excitement for more than 30 minutes. LaRocco, Tortelli, Albertine. Look at that, Damon Huffman, who got the whole shot, is in ninth. Robbie Raynard, who went down to about 35th, is now in 10th. Let's go to Davey now with Mike LaRocco after his very first moto win of the season. Oh, Mike, you hadn't won a moto this year before right now, and I tell you, what a great one to pick. That was the moto of the year. Congratulations to you and the Factory Connection team. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, it's actually been a hell of a lot longer than this year that I won a moto, but, you know, my Factory Connection, Jack and Honda, you know, worked excellent out there. I got a good start, and uh, which is a blessing. And uh, I followed Kevin for a little bit, and I thought I was faster than him, so I, I took over the lead. Well, what about that start? We're not used to seeing you up there from the beginning. Well, to be honest with you, I had a long talk with myself this week, and, uh, you know, I didn't say myself and then talk. But <laughs> I knew I had to dig deep. I mean, the guys are riding good this year, and I, I knew I'm right there. I got the bike, the equipment, and... Uh, you know, I, I wasn't happy where I was at, so I, you know, I knew I had to dig deep, and I paid more attention to Kevin on the start because he's been doing well, and I lined up next to him and it helped a lot. Well, I tell you what, I know these Union Villa fans were stoked to see you up there because if you hadn't been up there, it'd have been France first, South Africa second, and then America. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Mike Morocco has scored more points at Unadilla than any other rider in the history of the track. Tortelli gains a four-point lead in the points race. Let's go back to Davey. Oh, man, Sebastian, what a great moto that was. What a fantastic late charge. You held up Albertine, you almost got Morocco. Yeah, that was, you know, 
That was pretty tough. You know, these guys were going fast out there, and I was, you know, trying my best. And I was sometimes on the edge and doing mistakes and losing time. But, you know, I was trying my best, and Mike was pretty strong. I didn't half pass on Greg, but, you know, I was trying my best. And uh, it's very important here to, m to put some points. And, you know, two points is very important for the end of the championship now. Hey, tell me about that pass on Alberton. You went down into the hill. How'd you get him? Uh, you know, he was more on the inside, and I went to the outside and cut back on his wheel and I just, you know, touch him. I think I touched him pretty hard. That was pretty hard pass on him. But, you know, nobody went down, so it's good. And, uh, you know, the championship is going on, so we we'll have to trace for it. All right, we'll let you get ready for the second one. Good. We're back at the Unadilla Valley Sports Center in New Berlin, New York. Art Eckman, David Bailey, Davey Coombs for round seven of AMA Motocross action. Ricky Carmichael has swept the 125s. But after one of the most exciting 250 races that I can remember seeing, we're looking forward to this second 250 moto. Greg Albertine, four points behind Tortelli in the points race. Let's go to Davey. Just when you thought this 250 series couldn't get any more competitive, Mike LaRocco shows up. That's why after about five years, the number three factory connection Honda comes out and knocks off a moto win. It's his first since he's been riding with Zick, Rick Ziegfelder's team and also his first in a long time here at Unadilla. Morocco did it straight up fashion, beating Tortelli and Albertine. Whether or not he can do it again remains to be seen, but I guarantee you there's going to be 12,000 fans out there waving the flag for Mike Morocco. Boy, if Mike could get that sweep, that would put him right back up into that points race. His last overall victory was 1996 at Washougal. Tortelli once again lining up to the inside. Morocco was saying how he, he liked lining up next to Kevin Windham. Wyndham's been getting all the starts, he's been copying them. This time Albertine and Tortelli are separated. Tortelli's still lining up on the inside. He's got Emig next to him. Those guys have both been struggling from the line. Look at all the smoke now from everyone burning out trying to heat the tire. Morocco right next to Doug Henry, the defending 250 champion. We're sideways, and the gate will drop any second now. Let's check out Wyndham and Morocco side by side. The charge is on for the corner. Kevin Windham. Kevin, Windham. Kevin Windham gets the whole shot, but Doug Henry is right there to take the lead. Right behind Henry is Tortelli for a change. He had a great start this time. Not such a great start, though, for James Evans. Picking up the bike, our leader, Kevin Windham, number 14, with Doug Henry on the four-stroke Yamaha, putting the pressure on here in the early going. And there you see Tortelli. Huffman up there this time, right behind him. Kevin Windham with his eighth hole shot in 14 motos. That is an incredible statistic. With no slouch in the first couple laps either. It always just pushes him up there and puts a lot of distance on the rest of the pack. So even if he fades a little bit, he only fades back to about the fifth. LaRocco moving into fourth. He's looking for that overall. Albertine is back in seventh. He's got some picking up to do. With Tortelli already going to the work, down the inside, trying to get around Henry. Washed out a little bit. Who goes into the grass. That takes energy. You make mistakes like that at high speed, and you got to dab your foot on the ground. The strength it takes to keep that bike going straight starts to really take its toll at the end of the race. Wyndham, Henry, Tortelli, the top three. Tortelli, Henry's doing a good job keeping up his speed. Well, when you get somebody like Henry, as experienced as he is, running that number one plate, probably got the most power out there of anyone else as well. He's riding so strong like that, it's very difficult for anyone to make a pass. Morocco, with his eyes on the overall, is not that far behind. He's still in fourth, but he's got a pack of riders right behind him. Henry in second place, Tortelli in third. As they come over that jump, there's Morocco in fourth, Huffman, Sebastian Waugh, Albertine, Emmy. And now Robbie Rayner giving himself a better chance at it as he came all the way back to 10th place after crashing in the first lap in Moto 1. More 250 action from Unadilla when we return. Back at Unadilla. Our leader is Kevin Windham, but the battle for second has been torrid between Sebastian Tortelli, who's got a good start, and number one, Doug Henry Tortelli making the move, but look at the acceleration up the hill that Henry gets to reclaim second place. I thought Tortelli had the pass. He's so got a great, Tortelli. Yeah, he's got a good <laughs> chance right here if he can square it. 
Uh, it's just too much power. A little bit of slip on the backside by Tortelli. Oh, Tortelli goes down! Tortelli clipped the back of Henry's bike. And it doesn't look like he's going to get back into the race quickly. Tortelli has been hurt. Oh, this is horrible. The points leader is already taken off his helmet. He comes from the outside. Their lines are crossing. That was just a miscue, complete miscue by Tortelli. Well, it's a miracle that Henry didn't go down. And Tortelli looked like he put a hand out to break his fall. And that's what they're checking over right now, his left wrist. Could this be the end of his championship hopes? Let's hope not. That AMA official seems to think he broke his wrist the way he was signaling those other fellows there. I, had to, no, I just feel for Tortelli right here. It's pretty hard to tell, though, until they get to the hospital and check everything out. It is very apparent, though, that he is in a lot of discomfort as we check out Greg Albertine in a battle with Mike LaRocco. Albertine, I'm sure, does not know what has happened to Tortelli. At least the Tortelli is out of the race. This is not a way that Albertine would like to see the competition end in the points race. Mike LaRocco holding on. As we take another look at Tortelli, let's see if we can check in with Davey Coombs to get more information. Guys, you can see Tortelli is down, he's hurt. I'll tell you what happened, he came up out of that hill trying to pass Doug Henry. He crashed into Henry's back tire upon landing. Went down, it looks like on his wrist. He's getting attention. You see his mechanic, Shane Drew, talking to him. Here's his wife, Stephanie, coming in to check on him. Tough break for the series points leader on the second lap here at Unadilla. Tortelli having an unbelievable first season, really. A wonderful first season in the American motocross scene. There you see Huffman going down after a crash. So the track here at Unadilla, which gets ruddier and ruddier, is taking some victims. It appeared to me, though, that it was Tortelli's decision, a little aggressive too early on Henry, maybe some frustration trying to get around Henry, that perpetuated that move. Well, Henry has no problem. Gets right around him. Tortelli had that same opportunity down there in that same corner to get goodbye couldn't make it stick and it looked like you're right art like you might have tried to cut back to the inside what happens is ruts going up that hill and if you're lean a little bit to one side you can get caught on the inside of on the edge of a rut maybe put him a little bit off balance and made that angle towards henry a little bit more severe but either way and he hit the back tire high sided and now he's out and the battle for second place right now with albertine and henry and look at who's right in back of them it's Mike LaRocco looking for an overall, his first since 1996. Albertine, his very first overall, as we mentioned earlier in the telecast, was right here at Unadilla. No question about the fact he's comfortable here. Watch this pass. Down the outside, just leans right in, gets right into the berm. Kind of surprised Henry let him get by with that. It looked like he was very surprised looking at him rather than setting up his own turn. Here comes LaRocco for the block pass. LaRocco didn't even have to block him. Gives him a little roost on the way up the hill to make sure. So Mike LaRocco has moved up another notch on Doug Henry. As they put the ice on Tortelli's left wrist. Oh, that's, that's just a, a sad scene. The battle goes on on the track, however. Jeff Emig getting right in front of Robbie Raynard. Raynard coming right back. Raynard's got a lot of spirit. He loves this Unadilla track, especially after such a great showing in the 125s last year. And here was the movie made famous, going to the outside around there, catching up with Carmichael at the time. He's fast through that section. You can get some idea of that by how much gap he put on Emig through there. He found a line no one else even dreamed about last year. Now, they, of course, they all know. Number 17, Robbie Raynard, doing such an unbelievable job crashing in the second turn in the first moto, but coming all the way back to 10th spot. Damon Huffman. Looks like 
That's a throttle cable I think they're fiddling with. The way he's blipping the throttle, that's what he was looking at when he was sitting in the corner trying to get going again. I'll tell you the truth, the way he's been riding lately, the kind of luck he's had, and going down right there, he's probably not too anxious to get going. It's been an awful year for him. Great shot almost into the eyes of Robbie Rayner. And here is Greg Albertine taking on the leader. It's now a battle for first place. Bar to bar. Albertine with them going at it. Albertine has just shown us such great speed. Now, didn't those guys rub shoulders up that hill in the first mode? All, all they did was switch sides. <laughs> Wyndham didn't let him by this time, though. Kevin Wyndham trying to hold on to the lead after a fourth place finish of the opening moto. Albertine trying to take it away. What great racing we've seen here at Unadilla. This track just offers so many places to pass. And so much time can be made up and lost in one lap. Alby with the uh, sweep and the victory at Mount Morris been very consistent been on the podium the last three times and here goes Albertine don't look back the sign says get in it Mike Larocco's mechanic puts out so Albertine has taken over the lead from Kevin Wendell Mike Larocco is in third back with more exciting action from Unadilla as Mike Larocco Taking on Kevin Wyndham for second place. This is a big move for Mike LaRocco. It means it puts him in position for his first overall victory since 1996. Albertine, with a third place finish in the opening moto, is in the lead right now. LaRocco has to get second place or better here to win the overall. Kevin's not fighting him very much either, so the second place looks like it's going to hold up. Kevin dropped back to fourth in the first moto, and... I mean, he just doesn't have that look that I've seen before where he's going to get back up there and make a run out of it. Morocco clearing his vision, setting his sights on Albertine. He doesn't have to pass him for the overall, but I bet you he's going to try. Robbie Raynard has a chance for a decent overall despite the 10th place finish in that first moto as he grinds away here at Doug Henry. Complete opposite lines. That outside berm is getting shoved pretty far wide. He cuts out a little early. I don't care what you do in that corner at the bottom. I don't think you're going to out horsepower Doug Henry up that hill. So Raynard has to choose another area to try to make a pass and move up a notch. These guys are having a great fight. You can see that Robbie has had to stay out of the roost of that bike. Trying to find a different line to make a pass anyway, but still, there's a lot of rocks in that roost flying. And they're getting into lap traffic. Raynard, almost right on his tire now, gets side by side with Henry, uses a scrub off on a lapper, cuts through, and what a, what a slick move by Robbie Raynard. Just went around the screen with that lap rider set for him, that was perfect. So that's another way to get around Henry. And Robbie Raynard takes advantage of it. Jimmy Button on another four stroke is hounding Jeff Emig right now. Emig in a strong drive out of that berm up over the hill. Looked like he was riding a four stroke as well. Way accelerated out of the corner. Every time I see Emig, he looks aggressive. I can't figure out why he's not a little further up front. He's not getting the starts, as you pointed out, a telecast to go, David. Well, I, I know that's part of it, but yeah, I've seen him in his prime. And he was riding uh, for the title. Come from behind, and he's been a unable to really work his way up. Maybe there's just more talent now. The former two-time 250 National Outdoor Champion and one-time 250 Supercross Champion. Not to mention the 125 title. Check us out, our next telecast on ESPN2, coming up with Round 8 on Monday, August 8th. Back in Unadilla, where Mike Morocco won the first photo. Greg Albertine is out in front in the second photo. And Kevin Wyndham's got his hands full now with Robbie Raynard. Wyndham would like to hold this position, if he can, to get on the podium overall, but Robbie Raynard doesn't comply. 
Wasn't much he could do about that. Rainer just kind of grabbed that inside. Tony Berluti saying, you look good, be strong. Uh, she's had some tremendous rides here at Unadilla. Robbie Rainer, that is, as we check out John Dowd, who had an 11th place finish in the first moto, trying to push himself over to the top five here in moto number two. The kind of track that suits John Dowd. Just rough everywhere, a little bit loamy. Look at Henry trying to straighten the front end out. So Henry, who was once in contention and was caught up in the Tortelli crash, but didn't go down at that time, has come off to the side to straighten out the handlebars. Right now, he won't have any points out of this moto. And for those of you turning in late, Sebastian Tortelli in that crash, it appears to be a broken wrist or a dislocated wrist. The swelling is so much that uh, they really can't tell. He's at the hospital as we speak. The battle for fourth place is on with Jeff Emmy pursuing Kevin Windham. This is important for Windham. It would be his fourth podium, but the first time he hasn't won being on the podium. Time for a Honda riding tip, and what better place to talk about the rocks flying than here at Unadilla. How to prepare yourself for the rocks. So you see the hand guards on Sebastian Tortelli's bike. They've even drilled holes in there, so he still gets that airflow to his hands. And Sebastian wears his chest protector underneath his jersey. Doug Henry wears his on the outside. Some riders like the extra mobility you get from that. This is what happens when you don't wear one. That's going to look a lot worse tomorrow. As you watch LaRocco's rear wheel, look at the roost coming off of that, full of rocks. It's important to have a lot of different lines out there on the racetrack so you don't have to follow the roost of the guy right in front of you. This week's Honda Riding Tip, I'm David Bailey. Greg Albertine, our leader on the final lap of the final moto of the 250s here at Unadilla. This guy has worked so hard, and with Tortelli going down, scoring no points, and in the hospital, Greg Albertine will have taken over the points lead of the 250s. He came into this race two points in back of Sebastian Tortelli. And right there taking my favorite line, going from the outside, crossing over, back to the outside to scoop into that bowl, maintain the momentum. It's all coming together for him today, and the thing I like about Greg is he just charges so hard, and he's so fast everywhere, and for a long time, it seemed like he that kept getting the better of him, kept going down, but he's figured out a way to mix that speed and staying on two wheels and proved to be a pretty deadly combination. A lot of it has to do with the confidence, knowing the tracks, and uh, also the added pressure he puts on himself. Might have been a little bit of a help to have Sebastian Tortelli just cruise on over here and win the opening round. Just to, just to maybe put a little bit of extra pressure on him, saying, oh, it's not that tough to come over here and just win in your first try. What's been your problem? Albertine did go into the season uninjured from Supercross for the first time, and he did proclaim, I'm going to win it this year. Greg Albertine, the checkers here in Moto2. So for Albertine, that is his fourth Moto win. He went 3-1 in Red Bud just last week. So we've got a new points leader after seven rounds of AMA Motocross, and we'll return in a moment. AMA Motocross is brought to you by Honda Motorcycles and the 1999 Honda Race Team. Honda, ride red. Back at Unadilla, Greg Albertine. Winning moto number two with LaRocco in second. Robbie Rainer a very fine run in third. And Kevin Windham putting him in good position on the podium. Let's go to Davey. Well, Greg, once again for the second week in a row, you come out on fire in the second moto and you get a win, but this time it was huge because Tortelli got nothing. Yeah, I heard that, man. That's incredible. I just want to thank the Lord Jesus and give him all the glory because it was a tough race out there. Mike was going really well. Uh, my Suzuki was running great. I just want to thank all my sponsors, my Suzuki, Dunlop, MSR, Smith Goggles. My wife was just incredible in supporting me, and uh, my trainer, Joe, from Peak Performance, does a great job. And, of course, Joey, Joey Maurer. Well, what about this guy next to you, Roger DeCosta? He's got to be stoked to have one of his riders come to a place where he used to dominate back in the day in the Trans Ams, and you're out here winning motos for him. Well, I know that uh, Roger's put in so many hours, you know, and... Uh, if anybody deserves it, I think Team Suzuki does. You know, we've, we've been the underdogs for so long and been hammered by the press all the time. But, you know, we're trying just as hard as anybody else. And it seems like we're getting the breaks. And uh, 
Our bike's running incredibly. Well, congratulations, and we look forward to a, a good uh, heat run or uh, an end of the season race here because it's going to go down to the wire. I'm ready. Bring it on. With Morocco's first win since 1996, he becomes the fifth different winner on the season. You talk about depth, we've got it this year. Let's go back to Davey. All right, Mike Loraco, it is about time. Finally, you got one of these wins. It's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, you know, like I said, my factory connection, Jack in the Box Honda, worked real well today. I, I got two good starts, and, you know, that made the difference. Uh, this track is fast and, and tough, and uh, if you put yourself behind, it makes it hard to make it up. So, you know, I got my Honda out there. I kind of got stuck behind Greg after uh, Tortelli threw it away. I made a big mistake trying to miss him, and he got by me, and I just couldn't run him down. And uh, the last few laps, Got a little kind of uh, thinking too much, and I uh, let him get away, but I'll take this one and hopefully run from there. <clears throat> you picked up a huge amount of points as far as the championship goes, but more importantly, do you feel vindicated? You came back out here and you did it with, with I guess you'd say, a semi-privateer team. Well, I mean, I, I can't say enough about my team, uh, Rick, and uh, Factory Connection, and my mechanic, Paul. Um, they've been there 100% for me. I, I've had the stuff to win all year. I just finally got to put it together for them. Hey, you know what? I'm not allowed to talk to your mechanic, Paul, during the race because he says I jinxed him. Paul, how's it going? It's going great, man. We've worked so hard for this. I'm just so glad he was able to do it today. Uh, talk to us next week. We'll talk to you. <laughs> not if we're winning, though. <laughs> But it's Greg Albertine trying for Suzuki's first 250 National Championship since 1981. Albertine with a 21-point lead over Kevin Windham. Unfortunately, Sebastian Tortelli's crash might have just taken him out 